<laughs> Keep the faith, sir. Maybe you can start again with something small. Good luck to you, Mr. Tesla. Sheriff turns and leaves. <clears throat> Tesla stares up at his tower. Raging grief overtakes him and he dashes towards it. Down the road, Sheriff hears him, turns and sees, as Tesla climbs the tower with a sense of mission, crazed and anguished. Sheriff runs back to the tower. Mr. Tesla! Mr. Tesla! Tesla relentlessly climbs, huffing and puffing his way to the top. Machinations! Hollowness! This is the excellent foppery of the world! Mr. Tesla! Please! Come down! Please! Sir! He the top, stands precariously at the top of the towering framework. He screams angrily and thrusts his fist into the air, spitting rage. I gave up my life for you! I gave... I gave up love! Love! A ghostly apparition appears. Hovering in the air across from him, Tesla gasps. It is Morgan. <laughs> you... You dare not show your face! I... I stood at the door! You should have been the key! Door fashioned well, you raised no latch for me! What a pitiable fright grips thee, thou Superman! Tesla turns in fear and stumbles away along the tower platform. Morgan's apparition flies after him in pursuit. Where art thou, Faust, whose voice rang out to me, who toward me pressed with all thy energy? Is it thou who by my breast surrounded in all the depths of being art confounded? Am I, O oh form of flame, to yield to thee in fear? Tis I! I am Faust. I am thy peer. Thou art like the spirit thou canst comprehend, not me. Not me. With that, Morgan's apparition dissolves. Tesla looks wildly about, crazed and delirious. Finally, he slumps down on the platform and cries. Down below, Sheriff looks up with worry. Morgan's office, day. Morgan is talking on the phone when Catherine bursts through the door, two security guys hot on her heels. They grab her and she struggles. How could you be so heartless? Don't you know you're destroying a man? Yeah, hold on a second. Morgan waves the security guys off. Excuse me, madam, but who are you and what the hell are you talking about? Mr. Tesla. He's suicidal. A shell of a man because of you. He sacrificed his world for you. Nikola Tesla has destroyed himself. He's unreliable and naive. I gave him money. He spent it. He had his chance. But he's an artist. He's a beacon to the world. His brilliance is a gift to humanity. My God. God, Mr. Morgan, you must take advantage of it, even if for your own place in history. You could be the founding father of a new utopia. But no. Instead, you cast out Mr. Tesla like a mongrel dog to the cold. Why, Mr. Morgan? Did he nip at your heels? Did he piddle on your carpet? Why? Simply put, madam. There's no profit in. In frustration, Catherine leaps for him, but the security promptly restrain her. You Morgan nods to his men and they carry out kicking and screaming. You horrible, horrible being. You'll be damned for this. Exterior Drexel Building Day. Catherine is rudely thrown out. Dear Mr. Morgan, allow me to humbly apologize for my actions. The action of, of my dear but over-enthusiastic friend. How could she fathom the depths of your wisdom, the kind of which empires are made? Tesla's Waldorf, Waldorf sweet night. Burning the midnight oil, Tesla writes a letter to Morgan. For I have high regards for you as a big and honorable man, but food for thought I would submit. Morgan's office day. Morgan sorts through his mail and comes across Tesla's letter. <coughs> there is greater power in the leaf of a flower than the paw of a bear. That is as much as I'll ever say. Keep well and in good health. Yours truly, Nikola Tesla. Morgan trashes the letter without opening it. Exterior Wardenclyffe Tower Day. Wardenclyffe is desolate but abandoned. All but abandoned. Do you know when spring is near? used to make me so happy, and now it brings me only sorrow. 
It means so much that I would fain escape. Disintegration, separation. I do not know whose life I live. It has not seemed my own. Atop the tower, Tesla sits in quiet contemplation. He is now 57, but the constant defeat makes him look older. His reverie is shattered as a lawyer calls from below. Mr. Tesla! Excuse me, Mr. Tesla! <coughs> My client has instructed me to serve notice on this property. You have until the end of the month to vacate. Consider yourself notified, Mr. Tesla. Good day. With that, he tacks up the notice on the base of the tower. The men get into their car and drive off. Tesla can only muster a blank stare. Exterior field, Smiljan Day, or Smiljan Day. Nico's brother Dane rides his beautiful Arabian horse in the field. A vision of grace and purity, innocence and power. The horse is spirited, but Dane rides well. Hidden in the bushes nearby, Nico watches desperately, uh, je jealously. As Dane and the horse approach, Nico ducks. Dane and the horse ride by. Suddenly, the horse bucks and throws Dane to the ground. He lands with a hard bounce and is still. Nico looks on in horror and withdraws, to an, an, and withdraws an incriminating pea shooter from his mouth. He throws it away and runs to Dane. Dane! Dane! He bends over his brother, who is paralyzed and unconscious. Help! Help! Interior Tesla home, Smilian Knight. A doctor checks Dane, turns toward Nico's father, and shakes his head sadly. Both mother and father burst into tears. Nico watches in anguish if they all, as they wail and pray over the body of his comatose brother. Nico tugs at his parents and pleads. Mama! Papa! Mama! Interior Wardenclyffe Lab, day. The lab interior is barren and forlorn, save for a few of Tesla's devices and files. He is hooked up to his mood enhancer, wears the skull cap, and zaps his brain. Papa, I'll be everything he was. I promise. I'll be Dane for you. I I'll do better, I promise. The world managed to turn without me. The events came, went of their own accord. <laughs> there was no more need for Mr. Tesla. Interior Metropolitan, Me Metropolitan Opera House, night. Enrico Caruso sings into the microphone attached to radio apparatus with an operator on the stage. The art of violence will be continued by others. Insert a radio receiver. The earliest voice radio receiver, uncomplicated and inexpensive, about the size of a large bread box. Another snot nose upstart, altered one of my inventions, patented the means to broadcast the voice. Exterior Courthouse Day. Outside the Supreme Court of New York, Suffolk County, a newspaper boy waves the paper and shouts the headline. War is declared! America at war with Germany! Interesting, huh? War. Pastor. Hell, Pastor. My good friends, Mark Twain, Stafford Wyatt. Tesla bursts through the doors and runs down the steps, eyes wild with panic. He dashes across the street, <coughs> ignoring the, the screeching traffic. I fought the foreclosure of Orton Cliff, but lost the appeal. The property now belong completely to the Waldorf Astoria. <laughs> Do this for them, please. Shoreham train station day. The train pulls into the station. Before it has come to a complete stop, Tesla hops off. He runs toward Gordon Cliff. His hat blows off, but he doesn't care. I concoct the ridiculous theory that my tower was being used by German spies. A loud explosion. Tesla stops and gasps in horror, then runs for his life. Exterior Warden Cliff continuous. The tower is still standing despite the explosion. A small demolition crew is still there, perplexed. The federal government ordered it destroyed, but Stanford White. You see, he built me a pillar. It took three separate blasts. Tesla runs toward the tower in time to see... No. The last explosion. The grand structure finally topples, its great bulbous head crashing violently to the ground. Tesla drops to his knees. Perhaps it is better in this present world of ours <coughs> that a revolutionary invention be hampered than ill-treated in its adolescence. Tesla's room, Hotel New Yorker, night. Unpacked boxes and pigeon cages are strewn about his new and cheaper hotel room. Tesla weeps. All his dreams are effectively vanquished forever. You see, by want of means, by selfish interest, pedantry, stupidity, and ignorance, let it be attacked and stifled, let it pass through bitter trials and tribulations through the strife of commercial existence. Tesla becomes aware of the white pigeon. It is flown in through the open window. Curtains leisurely waft in the breeze. 
Two beams of light flash from its eyes, converging into a searchlight that scans the room. The spotlight settles on Tesla's face, mesmerizing him, showing him revelations. So all that was great in the past will emerge now. You see, all the more powerful, all the more triumphant from the struggle. Thus, we get our light. Public library, night. A small crowd is gathered by the steps of the public library. They watch in amazement as Tesla stands, arms outstretched. A dozen pigeons have alighted on him, and a hundred more are at his feet, happily eating the grain he has scattered. He is dressed in formal evening wear, white tie and tails, streaked with bird shit. <laughs> Kenneth, also dressed formally, runs up to the crowd and worms his way through. Mr. Tesla, there you are. Tesla slowly shifts his hand and raises a finger. Stop. Mr. Tesla, what are you doing? Don't you remember the Edison medal? You promised you'd accept it. They're all waiting for you, sir. Everybody's there. Tesla is suddenly distraught. Fighting back tears, he sags and lowers his arms, and the pigeons flutter away. I'm at the end of my rope. I can't afford to fight Marconi any longer. I no longer control my patents. You see, they've forgotten. They've, they've all forgotten. Come, Mr. Tesla. Let's set the record straight. Interior reception hall night. The auditorium is packed with peers, admirers, and friends. The Johnsons, the Kiplings, and even Marguerite. Tesla sits in an especially designated chair on stage. He is humbled, awkward, though does his best to appear dignified. But the biggest thrill belongs to Kenneth, who proudly addresses the assembly. We do not do this for the mere sake of conferring a distinction. Tesla looks out at the audience, and he spars Marguerite. They exchange a look. She's proud of him, as is Catherine. No, Mr. Tesla. We beg you to cherish this medal as a symbol for our gratitude for a new creative thought which you have given to our art and to our science. You've lived to see the work of your genius established. What shall a man desire more than this? There rings out to us a paraphrase of Pope's lines on Newton. Nature and nature's laws lay hidden night. God said, let Tesla be, and there was light. Kenneth steps aside and gestures to Tesla. There is wild applause. Tesla is moved to tears as he rises from his chair and allows Kenneth to pin the medal on him. Some years later, Thomas Edison passed away, and the whole of America doomed its lights. Even I. Oh, yes. Exterior graveyard, early 1930s day. Catherine's coffin is lowered into the grave as the minister intones the last rites. I outlived them all, and now the divine Mrs. Philip Bond. Tesla and Robert are now old men. They stand together with their remaining friends, relatives, and kids. Agnes and Owen are fully grown now and have kids of their own. The service is over. Everyone heads back to waiting cars. Tesla puts his arm around Robert, who struggles to maintain the stiff upper lip. Her very last words were of you, you know. She charged me not to lose sight of you. She cherished you, Nick. Perhaps in another lifetime it'll be the two of you I think she'd be happier then. Oh, sorry. Yes, maybe in another lifetime. Robert puts his arm around Tesla. They turn and join the waiting funeral party. Movie theater, early 1940s night. It is raining. Ancient Tesla and Kenneth emerge from the theater as the movie lets out. The magnificent Ambersons is on the marquee. The men open their umbrellas and venture out into the rain. <laughs> I'll say this for Edison. The motion picture, his best idea. But it takes an Orson Welles to make it special. Oh, yes, but Simpson Kane, better. <laughs> Exterior, New York Street, night. As they approach an intersection, lightning strikes somewhere. Tesla looks up and suddenly feels inspired. Uh, Mr. O'Neill, I hope you don't mind. Sir? Uh, I need to think now. Yes, sir, I understand, sir, by all means. I'll see you soon. As ever, my good man. They begin to go their separate ways when Kenneth has a thought, stops, and turns. You know Joe Lewis is fighting J.J. Braddock on Saturday? Tesla is halfway across the street. He turns and calls back. Ah! Braddock's a punk! Lewis will win! They smile and wave to each other, and a bus passes. When it is crossed by, Tesla has mysteriously vanished. 
Kenneth contemplates this for a second, unaware it's the last image of Tesla he'll ever see. He turns and walks away. Exterior, another city street, night. Tesla is in full-on daydream mode, oblivious to all around him. He steps off a curd. Slam! A taxi hits him, full on. Tesla's body flies up and crashes on the pavement. Traffic stops. Onlookers rush over. The driver jumps out. He jumps right in front of me. He kneels down to Tesla. Miraculously, Tesla's still alive. Hey, buddy. You all right? To everyone's surprise, Tesla slowly gets up and brushes himself off. Listen, Lister, you better stay down. Somebody call an ambulance. No, I'm all right. I'm, please, I'm all, No, don't trouble yourself. No, sir, you better stay. Uh, no, no, look, I, I'll be fine, I assure you. Uh, just just help me here a little. Just. The cab driver helps thank him you. up. Someone finds his umbrella. Yes, thank you. I'm, I'm, you see, I'm a little group, but I'm fine. I uh, Really, I... No. Tesla hobbles on down the street, leaving everyone scratching their heads in mumbling and bewilderment. The cab driver, relieved that it's all ending like this, gets back in his cab. The crowd disperses as Tesla shuffles away into the distance, finally disappearing into the dazzling electrical display of New York City. <clears throat> Super titles. Nikola Tesla died on January 7th, 1943, of coronary thrombosis. No lights were dimmed. Uh, Ronald Reagan comes to an address, th address to the nation March 23, 1983. Well, let me share with you a vision of the future which offers hope. It is that we embark on a program to counter the awesome Soviet missile threat with measures that are defensive. Titles continue as Reagan recites his famous Star Wars speech. The FBI eventually returned Tesla's belongings and paper to the Yugoslavian ambassador. Notably missing was any evidence of a particle beam weapon. Now, let us turn to the very strengths and technology that spawn our great industrial base and that have given us the quality of life we enjoy today. What if free people could live secure in the knowledge that their security did not rest upon the threat of instant U.S. retaliation to deter a Soviet attack? That we could intercept and destroy strategic ballistic missiles before they reached our own soil or that of our allies? Now, I know this is a formidable technical task, one that may not be accomp accomplished before the end of this century. Yet current technology has attained a level of sophistication where it's reasonable for us to begin this effort. Uh, there's a stock shot of Reagan continuing his address at his second inaugural address, January 21, 1985. I have now approved a research program to find, if we can, a security shield that would destroy nuclear missiles before they reach their target. Now, it wouldn't kill people. It would destroy weapons. It wouldn't mm. militarize space. It would help demilitarize the arsenals of Earth. It would render nuclear weapons obsolete. Exterior Niagara Falls, the Tesla statue, present day. The great stone statue of Tesla on Goat Island at Niagara Falls. He is dressed in a flowing robe, seated with a large book opened on his lap. This is a favorite roosting place for pigeons. <laughs> Titles continue. On January 21st, 1943, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled Marconi's patents invalid due to Tesla's previous descriptions, that Tesla's fundamental patents provided the true basis of radio. Still, most encyclopedias and references credit Marconi as the inventor of radio. Throughout his long lifetime, Nikola Tesla laid claim to over 700 patents. His inventions and discoveries included and led to the de development of radar, sonar, x-rays, neon and fluorescent lights, laser beams, automobile speedometer and ignition systems, microwave ovens, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, craft, ozone producing apparatus, Tesla coil, the bladeless steam turbine, electron microscope, and many, many more. Ronald Reagan's address to the nation in 1983 continues. My fellow Americans, tonight we're launching an effort which holds the promise of changing the course of human history. There will be risks and results take time, but I believe we can do it. As we cross this threshold, I ask for your prayers and your support. Thank you. Good night. God bless you all. The white pigeon lands on the statue, and we pull back the veal, Niagara Falls, in all its raging glory. Fade out to the end.
guess is it was well enjoyed by all. Um, thank you so much, Robert, and thank you. You guys did a fabulous job. Fabulous job.